several years ago, I was watching a television show about alligators, of all things. And what I saw was these alligators, during the mating season, they would produce a splashy water fountain above their backs. It was an amazing thing. I'd never seen it before. But I said, I know what that is. That's Faraday waves. It has to be Faraday waves. Faraday waves are an instability wave, which is a different type of wave than the wave you might get if, say, you slosh your hand back and forth in your bathtub. This is a different type of wave. If we take that surface in your bathtub and move it up and down until an instability sets in, you just got too much energy, and all of a sudden, boom, you get a wave that goes up and down, that's a Faraday wave. One of the things that excited me most about seeing these alligators and their water dance was, I think this is probably the only circumstance where Faraday waves are produced in nature. How are these alligators producing such big Faraday waves? One of the first things I wanted to know is what is the spacing between alligator scoots? Scoots are these little bumps, these ridges that show up on the back of an alligator. And you notice that they're periodic. I mean that the distance between each scoot is almost the same. So to make things easier to study in the laboratory, we made a simplified model of the alligator's back. We hooked it up to a simple machine that would make it go up and down and produce these Faraday waves. And then we can change the frequency, how fast this thing goes up and down. And that's a crucial element to studying the science of it because we want to know what's the relationship between the frequency, the waves, and the spacing of the scoots on the alligator's back. We think that those waves, once they're created, interact with these bumps to form a standing wave. And that phenomenon is called a resonance. It's almost like these waves pile up, that they stack up. And so you get, instead of a wave that's only this high, say, you get a wave that's this high in amplitude. One of the things that people often notice is the bellow or the roar of the alligator because that's very dramatic and very loud. And you can hear it because you're in the air. But I was primarily interested in what you don't hear that's underwater. And the loudest thing underwater is the sound that the chest cavity produces at 20 hertz. You can't hear it above water. You couldn't actually hear it below water. You'd feel it. It's 20 hertz. You'd feel like thumping on your chest. But that's what I was primarily interested in because that's what produces the Faraday waves. The way these alligators produce high amplitude waves and high amplitude lung motion is a lot like the way a guitar produces a high amplitude sound. Its muscles are the strings and the alligator's lungs are the resonator and they're moving at the frequency they want to move at in order to produce big high amplitude waves. When you take the resonance of the chest cavity and combine that with the resonance of the waves and the scoots, you've got a perfect recipe for creating huge high amplitude waves that just shoot up, spit off droplets, and splash everywhere. And that, of course, is what you see with the alligators in the water dance.